Boiler making at Blackgate's Engineering. This is part two. Today is Saturday the 30th of September 2017. And this morning, bright and early, I was in the back room of Blackgate's Engineering. And Duncan, the boiler maker, who flanges the plates, was getting ready to do the job. But alas, his hammer was past its best. So I watched him as he fitted a new head to the hammer. These type of hammers have a copper head at one side and a hide head at the other side. I watched as Duncan drilled some holes in the hide to weaken it, then all it took was a smart tap with a screwdriver to release the hide part. I always wondered how they got the animal hide so thick, but of course it's coiled up like this. And a few smart taps on the metal plate which is sat on the bench seats the new piece of hide into the hammer head. It needs a new copper head as well, but really speaking, for the boiler flanging, most of the work's done with the hide side. And now the hammer's fixed, Duncan can flange the boiler plates for today. What he's making at the moment is a flange plate for a Lion 3.5 inch gauge steam locomotive. The Lion locomotive was featured in the old film The Titfield Thunderbolt. And if you've seen that great old film, you'll know just what I'm talking about. Here's a picture of it. As you can see, it has a very special design of boiler with a really tall haystack type firebox. And as far as I'm aware, the part that Duncan is currently making is the back head. This will need lots of holes drilling in it for the fittings and of course the fire hole door. The main front part of the boiler and the two sides are formed from one sheet. Duncan's not making that part today, he's just making the back head and the two inner firebox plates as well as the main tube plates at the front. This is a very labour intensive job. This morning we were all having a chat about the pros and cons of using tooling to make boilers like this. But as Blackgate's engineering do not make one specific type of boiler, just about every boiler they make is different to the next one. They make a lot of sweet pea boilers. But really, owing to the cost and the amount of tooling that they would require, it's not practical. It's better to do it this way. And it's a very sympathetic process. The metal is not brutally hammered about, and it's annealed frequently. Annealing is a process by which you heat the plates until they're cherry red and then quench them in water, and this softens the metal because if you beat the copper relentlessly, it will eventually crack as it goes around the corners. So by annealing it and softening it frequently, it keeps it soft and you get a very strong plate. Duncan heated up the plate like this with this massive blow lamp three times and quenched it each time in a bucket of water. I like to see things that are physically made by human beings. I fully appreciate the CNC principle, but in my opinion, boilerplate making like this is very good. It's a very old technology and it's good to see it done in this way. And while I'm saying all this, Duncan is still annealing this piece of copper. This is running in real time, normally would speed it up, but I will run it in real time just to show how long it takes. I've shortened the sequence slightly, but you can see now it really is starting to glow red. The lights are quite bright for the video, so it's not that apparent, but when it reaches red heat, Duncan simply puts it into a bucket of water to quickly cool it off. So once the piece of copper has been quenched in the water, Duncan removes it, dries it off, and resumes the process of beating the flange along the top of the former. The whole point of this is to achieve a perfect flange, a perfect 90 degree flange with no lumps and bumps in it. And it really does take a while. Once again, this is in real time, and you can see how many times it's hitting this piece of copper. And after turning over the copper once again to beat the other side, it's time to have a quick feel and see if there's any lumps and bumps there. And no, it's perfectly smooth. Maybe there's a tiny one there. I thought I'd point it out to Duncan and spoil his day, but it's nothing to worry about. But Duncan said, no, take your finger away and I'll beat it there too. Then once again, he re the piece of copper because it's very important with these boiler plates to make sure they are perfect. This one's speeded up, same principle, heat it to red heat, quench it in water, put it back in the former after it's been dried off, and carry on beating the piece of copper plate until it's perfectly flat on both sides. And now it feels really smooth. Is that a bump? No, 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 I'm just winding him up. It really is very smooth. The top of this boiler is a gunmetal casting and it's going to take quite a lot of handwork to make this shine. Here are the rest of the flat plates, ready to be flanged. I'm going to speed this one up. 
and by speeding it up you can more clearly see the process of how the copper is persuaded to go around the former. It looks and behaves like plasticine, but that's only because it's been annealed and it's very soft. But it's nowhere near as soft as plasticine, it's still quite hard. After a quick clean up on the vertical belt sander, this form is just about finished. But it doesn't stop there, there are more to do. So now we're going to show the forming of the front tube plate. And once again I don't want to labour this, it's much better in a high speed, you can just see it happening. Unlike the large steel formers in the last video that I did here at Blackgate's Engineering, these small formers move around a little bit in the vise. But it's not a problem, the copper still bends around the outside edge of them, which is the main thing. This is as close as Blackgate's Engineering get to mass production. There are three formers now in the brazing hearth, all being heated at the same time. The one nearest the flame gets red first, and that's removed and quenched in the water, followed by the second one and finally followed by the third one. And after this final beating, the flange plates are more or less complete. That's the tube plate done. And here are the inner firebox formers, first one, then the other. And here are the boiler plates in their final shape, posing for the camera on the bench. Before these plates can be called finally finished, there are a couple more operations. This one is spotting for the tubes. First it's done on one side, then the clamps are switched over to drill the other side so nothing moves. This twist drill is only one eighth of an inch in diameter, and the reason for that is it's just been used as almost like a centre pop, a spot mark. It is not being drilled all the way through, as you can see here. And the job doesn't stop here, there's more to do. After this, the parts get put in an acid bath to clean off all the scale. They will finally be cleaned up by hand. This has filled the main man at Blackgate's Engineering, just showing us how the boiler is going to be made. And the construction of this boiler is a little bit unusual. As you can see by Phil's hand gestures, he's showing how the outer firebox wrapper is bent to go around the inner firebox. And when I said there was more work to do, as you can see, yes, considerable cleanup work. This is a finished boiler kit, getting ready to be packaged up for collection. And just in case anyone out there is getting more confused by the minute, this is not a Lion boiler kit. That's not yet finished. This one is a boiler kit for an engine called a Speedy, which is an entirely different design. I thought I'd take this opportunity to just show you some other formers. These are inner and outer firebox formers for a Pansy steam locomotive. Just as I was getting ready to leave, Phil showed me this. This is a cylinder casting and it's got all the ports cast in, which is quite a feat really, if you think about it. It has the ports cast in for the steamways and the ports cast in for the piston valves. And inside this casting, there are some hidden chambers as well. So Phil showed me this really good thing. Look at this, it's very, very old, and it's not a pattern. It was something that was made to demonstrate to the foundry workers how to make this casting, how to make the sandbox for it. I don't know much about pattern making or foundry work, and this thing has me a bit puzzled. All these solid objects that Phil is pulling from inside the box are going to be replaced with sand, and these form the holes for the cylinder, the holes for the piston valve, and all these other things inside for the steamways which are internal to the casting. It's quite ingenious really, and as Phil says, it has to be perfectly aligned in every way possible, hence the marks. As I just said, I know nothing about how to cast metal. This is a bit of a black art as far as I'm concerned. It looks like an ancient version of the puzzle box from the film Hellraiser. Very scary. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Phil, Duncan and Matt, not forgetting the lovely Heather who offered to wear a bikini in the next episode. That's it for now. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.